So we really do believe that giving you knowledge gives you power as well, because you can then pick what is right for you. So there are lots and lots of options. We've already spoken about lifestyle, so obviously reduce, well, stopping smoking, reducing alcohol. We spoke about exercise last time, breathing techniques and weight management. These are all helpful for your long-term health as well as with uh, menopause. Speaking to others, talking therapies, that can all help your mental well-being as well as your uh, physical symptoms. Then we spoke about yoga, tai chi, acupuncture, lots of different sort of um, other alternative therapies can also be quite helpful. You can, of course, buy medications that are herbal remedies over the counter. Um, you know, s some women find they help. They do have also their own problems in terms of the interacting with some medications uh, and not being regulated. So if you're in doubt at all and you're wanting to start herbal remedies, do speak to your pharmacist or your healthcare professional. There are medications that can be given that are non-hormonal, so things like antidepressants, uh, various painkillers like gabapentin, pregabalin, amongst others, they can sometimes take the edge off uh, menopausal symptoms but really by and large the best treatment is replacing those hormones that your body is lacking that is why you get those symptoms so hormone replacement therapy is the best treatment um, and so that involves estrogen progesterone and the third one which we haven't really spoken much about is testosterone and I'll come back to that again at the end so the rest of the talk, we'll be focusing on HRT and the different products that are available. But of course, like you can see here, there are lots of options. Okay, so let's, <clears throat> thank you. Let's break it down into the different hormones. So estrogen, if we replace that, that is what then helps your menopausal symptoms. So you can have it as a tablet. Okay, so you can have it as a tablet. You can have it as a patch. Now there are lots of different types of patches out there. Here are some examples. Yeah. Um, as an example, like this is this is Estradot. I've opened it up. It's quite a small patch. Um, it's clear, so when it sticks on, it's very clear. And you stick it onto your bottom or onto your thigh. And um, on, on the whole, you know, you can change it uh, sort of once or twice a week, depending on the type of patch you've got. So patches are a way of replacing estrogen. You've also got gels. Now, um, this one is called estrogel. So you rub that into your outer arm or your inner thigh. There's another one also called Sandrina. Now they come in little sachets. Uh, some women like them because you can kind of put it in your bag. If you travel a lot, it's quite helpful. Um, and they come in different doses as well. So the, the gel you have to use every day. <clears throat> There's also the option of this sort of fancy little gadget. It's a spray. Now you spray it onto your forearm. And then if you need more than one dose, you kind of move it around and that can really help with um, symptoms. This delivers estrogen. OK, so all of these, a patch, a spray, gel, they deliver estrogen through the skin. They are called transdermal um, preparations of estrogen. If, if you've still got a womb, you also need to take progesterone. So you can have that as a, as a tablet. There are lots of different types of tablets, but the one that's really in demand at the moment, and understandably so, is micronized progesterone or eutrogestan. Now you can see they're only tiny little capsules, um, and you take them at night. They 
the reason why you need progesterone if you've got your womb is it helps to protect the lining of the womb from getting too thick if you were to take estrogen by itself. So that's really important. If you've got a womb, you should really take both hormones. This micronized progesterone is really quite natural. It comes from yams um, and it's thought to be most similar to your own hormones that you are producing in your own body. Okay. As a side effect, I see it as a benefit. It also is quite sedative. Uh, so it helps with sleep. So you take it at night and it helps a bit with sleep. And it can also take the edge off anxiety as well in its own right. So that's one type of progesterone. There are other types of progesterone tablets that you can have. You can also have the, um, the progesterone mixed in with the patch. So this one's called Everil Sequi. There's another one called Everil Conti. That's where the estrogen and the progesterone are mixed all in one. So if you have issues maybe remembering to take the capsule or um, you, know, you, know, you prefer patches, then sometimes... Uh, women prefer to have the one patch, you stick it on and it's got everything in it. But again, you have to remember to change it depending on the preparation uh, regularly. So the other way that you can have, the other way that you can have progesterone is as the Mirena coil. Okay, so I've brought this with me just to show you. If we imagine obviously that that is the womb, the fallopian tubes and the ovaries are here. The coil goes into the womb and it, 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 it's, it's not as bad as it sounds. Look, I'll show you. So it, it kind of goes in straight like that. It's a tiny little device, goes in straight, and then it sits there, opens into the womb, and it sits there for the purpose of HRT for five years. So what that does is that just um, delivers progesterone locally to the lining of the womb. So it protects the lining of the womb. And you don't have to remember to take a tablet. You don't have to remember to put a patch on. And then alongside that, you can then have any estrogen that you want. So it delivers that pro progesterone element just locally where it's needed. But the benefit of this one as well is that it also provides contraception. Um, and if you've got heavy periods or you've got spotting, which often is the case when your hormones start to change, you can get irregular bleeding, then actually the Mirena coil in most women can get rid of any bleeding altogether. So uh, you know, it's, it is an option there uh, uh, for the progesterone element. Okay. So the other way we can uh, give you estrogen is through the vagina. So we talked about vaginal changes, dryness, itching, soreness, etc., with the hormonal um, changes in the body. So we can give you vaginal estrogen. So I've got a few here. I'll start by showing you uh, Vagifem or Vagirux. Now, this is the applicator. Um, Vagifem and Vagirux are exactly the same product, but Vagirux, you, you reuse the applicator, whereas Vagifem comes with separate applicators. And it's basically a pessary. So it's a little, t a little tablet that you put into your vagina. You start off with a, like a loading dose, so it's every, every night. And then after a few weeks, it's twice a week. And that just helps to replenish the lining of the vagina, the skin down there, and it helps to restore the vagina to what it was before. Okay, So that's one type of vaginal estrogen. Very popular is also this Avestin cream. So you can have the estrogen as a tablet or a pessary or as a cream. Now that comes with an applicator. You draw it up. I often prescribe this one because I ask women to put a little bit into their vagina and then a little bit onto their finger and you can rub it onto the vulva. It can sometimes help with waterworks. So that is a vesting cream. And then we've got lower dose preparations. So even women who have had breast cancer, obviously it's subject to a discussion with the healthcare professional, but we do prescribe um, uh, estrogen uh, replacement to the vagina in breast cancer women, and we often go for low doses 
in that scenario. So Lysel is a type of gel. Again, it's similar to the cream, but it's just lower dose. Comes again with an applicator. And you've also got this one, which is really quite liked by women. It looks a little bit frightening, I suppose, but but it's it's quite it's quite waxy in the sense that it melts in the vagina and gives you a bit of lubrication, moisturization, as well as a low dose of estrogen. So that's another type, it's called Invagis. Okay. You can have a look at all of these in a bit. Um, now, I've brought this along, but I think it's quite nice to show. This is another way of replacing vaginal estrogen. You put this in the vagina, it's super soft, so it's, it's not as scary as it might look. And it lasts for three months up there, providing estrogen sort of daily to the vagina, but you don't have to apply it twice a week or daily. It just stays there and you have it replaced every three months. So that's another way of having vaginal estrogen. Okay. Now, interestingly, you can actually buy Vagifem uh, from the pharmacies. You don't necessarily need a prescription. The rest of them, however, need uh, a prescription. Okay, and then testosterone, we mentioned um, briefly, and again, I'll come back to it at the end. Testosterone is the third hormone that is actually in the female body, even though we always think of it as being a male hormone. The female body does have quite a bit of testosterone. Um, at the moment, we only really give it if you have a poor sex drive, despite being on estrogen uh, therapy. Okay, and so uh, I'll show you those again in a moment at the end. Okay, so very briefly, what are the benefits of HRT? Well, for those who are having symptoms, it will help quite quickly to tackle those symptoms. So you will feel better because it'll help to get rid of those symptoms. But in the long term, it can also help to protect your bones. And there's research to show that even low doses of estrogen will help to strengthen your bones and protect you from something called osteoporosis. Now, osteoporosis is where your bones are super thin, they're really fragile, and they break even with a little trip or a little fall you break your bones, that is called osteoporosis. So HRT helps to protect against that. And then if it started under the age of 60 or within the last 10 years, so within 10 years of your last period, it will also help to protect you from heart disease and from strokes. So it will help to prevent that build up here of plaque that you get in your vessels that contributes towards blockages of vessels and heart disease. So it also can reduce the risk of developing bowel cancer. It can help to strengthen your muscles because we know as you are postmenopausal, you lose muscle mass, muscle strength. So actually HRT can help to reverse that. It can help with joint pains. It can help with type 2 diabetes in terms of controlling your sugars. It can help with that. And in women who have had a premature menopause, so that is when their periods have stopped under the age of 40, then actually there's evidence to show that HRT reduces the risk of dying from all causes. So this is why we said it's really important that those ladies who've gone through an early menopause um, have you know, a, a discussion about hormone replacement therapy. So what are the risks of HRT? Well, the first thing is blood clots. Now you may hear that HRT increases the risk of blood clots. 
actually that is only if we give you the estrogen as a tablet. So if we give you the estrogen as a gel, a spray or a patch, then actually there's no increased risk of blood clots because the estrogen is going through the skin. But if you take the estrogen as a tablet, then there's a small increased risk of clots. The same thing about stroke as well. So a small increased risk of having a stroke if you take tablet estrogen. But again, if you have transdermal estrogen through the skin, then that risk is, is not increased at standard doses. Now everyone worries about breast cancer risk, that's the usual um, one that, that is discussed uh, with me. Um, and actually, if we put it into context, the risk of breast cancer from hormone replacement therapy is thought to be really quite small. The risk is higher from, think, from lifestyle um, choices, for instance, being overweight or drinking too much alcohol or smoking. Um, the risks are increased. So the risk of HRT compared to lifestyle choices is, is, is really quite, quite small. Okay, so, um, we, you know, these are hormonal treatments. What are the side effects then? So um, we do find the side effects vary depending on the type of HRT you're on and the type of different hormones you're taking. But most women, the side effects will settle within the first three to six months. The side effects do overlap between estrogen and progesterone. So things like um, feeling sick, headaches, bloating, irregular bleeding from the vagina. These are all potential side effects of HRT that may then settle over a period of time. Um, there's other ones here, so things like mood changes, um, acne or greasy skin, um, the sedative effects which we talked about. They usually, any kind of side effects that you're struggling with usually do settle after a few months, but if they don't, then sometimes changing the type of HRT can, can help. So how do we decide what HRT is right for you? The first thing we do is we ask you, do you still have your womb? Okay, so if you've still got your womb, we've already touched on this, you will need estrogen to treat your symptoms and also progesterone to protect the lining of your womb. If you've had your womb taken out, so you've had an operation to remove your womb, most women just need estrogen. There are a few exceptions. So for instance, if you've only had part of your womb removed or you've got endometriosis, sometimes these women still need both hormones. But by and large, if you've had your womb taken out, you just need estrogen. So we then look at, <clears throat> we then look at when your last period was. If your last period was within the last 12 months, we give you a combination of estrogen and progesterone, but we give you the progesterone for only two weeks out of every cycle, okay? So for instance, if we were to give you the Sutrogestan, we'd ask you to take it for sort of 12 to 14 days out of every cycle, but carry on using the estrogen every day. And then when you stop taking the progesterone, you then get a bleed. So it's almost mimicking your own cycles. You kind of will get that regular monthly bleed. And the reason why we go for this type of regime is because you've still got your own hormones and your own cycles. If we don't give it this way, you're likely to get a lot of irregular bleeding. If your last period was more than 12 months ago, so more than a year ago, then we can give you those two hormones to take every single day. 
And with this regime, you shouldn't have any bleeding. So even the women who were started on that first regime where you'd get bleeding, even those women will eventually get switched on to what we call the continuous combined HRT regime so that you don't get bleeds with that. Okay, so then the other thing we look at is do you have any risk factors for blood clots, for heart disease? So we look at your medical history, your weight, your family history. If you don't have any of those risk factors, then really you can try any type of HRT you want. Um, if you do have those risk factors, we tend to advise you to go with an estrogen through the skin because then there's less likely a chance of um, blood clots and strokes. So I've just got a couple more slides and then of course I'm, I'm more than happy to take questions. Um, we talked about the vaginal symptoms. Um, so what happens with the change in the estrogen and change in hormones with the menopause is that the skin down there, the vulva, becomes less stretchy, it becomes quite thin, it becomes um, quite sore and itchy and, 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 and stingy. Um, it also, the change in hormones affects the bacteria down there, so you're more likely to get infections. So you might uh, sort of have found that it's, it's just sore, it's itchy, it might be that you find it's painful with sex, it might be that you are getting a lot of stinging when you pass urine and actually there's no infection or it might be that you are getting lots of urine infections or cystitis and all of that can be due to the changes in the skin down there okay so with that in mind we can treat it with lots of different um, products we've already gone through the pessaries the creams the low dose preparations and the ring We've talked about how um, the uh, pessary is available over the counter. And you can use this in addition to estrogen and progesterone HRT, or you can use it instead of whatever the symptoms are that you have that are bothering you most. So vaginal estrogens are extremely safe. Um, they're very little, very little is absorbed into the bloodstream. Um, so really, they, they have very little in the way of side effects. Okay. So alongside vaginal estrogens, you can have, and I've got lots of, sort of samples here that you can take home, various lubricants. So you can have oil-based lubricants, water-based lubricants, silicone-based. Um, so that can sometimes make it more comfortable with sex. And of course, there's also moisturizers that are non-hormonal. You can use with hormones or even without um, and they just help to replenish the, 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 the area down there, similar to when you have dry skin on your hands and you put a moisturiser on, then moisturisers down there can also make a big difference. So various brands, so you've got the Yes brand, the Silk brand, Replens, um, these are all good brands that you can um, you know, buy these over the counter for. Okay, so lastly we wanted to speak about testosterone. So Women produce testosterone from their ovaries, but also from their adrenal glands. So these are glands that sit just on top of the kidneys. The ovaries produce about 50% of your testosterone. And testosterone is really quite important to the function. The ovaries produce about 50% of the testosterone. And testosterone is really quite important to the functioning of the body. So it peaks in the 20s and then slowly starts to fall in terms of the level so that by the time you are menopausal, you've got about a quarter of the testosterone that you used to have. So obviously it's relevant in menopausal women or postmenopausal women as the testosterone starts to drop. There is some evidence that it affects sex drive. There's other evidence that perhaps it can be important in metabolic function, in muscle and bone strength, um, in your mood, 
how your brain sort of functions and your concentration. But at the moment, we've only got evidence to show that it helps with sex drive. So it's only really indicated for us to give you testosterone if you still have a poor sex drive and you've already been started on HRT and it hasn't really improved things uh, enough for you. Okay. So then it can help with libido, with sexual arousal, with orgasm. Now the problem we've got is that we don't have um, any licensed preparations that are made specifically for women on the NHS at the moment. So what we do is we use male products in smaller doses in an unlicensed way and that's how we replace the testosterone. There's only one product at the moment um, which is produced in Australia and it's imported. That is actually produced for women but it's only available privately at the moment. However, they are similar in the way they, they function. So this is an example. It's called Testogel. We would ask if you do start testosterone that you <clears throat> make this sachet last about eight days. So you use a little blob. You rub it into your thigh. You change the place that you put it in um, every day. And then that gets absorbed into the bloodstream. And so something like this would last eight days. So you can see it's a tiny amount of testosterone. Another one is called Testim. So the benefit is it comes with a screw top um, uh, lid, so you can kind of close it again. This would make it last for 10 days. So you only use a tiny amount. Um, and we would sort of uh, monitor your blood tests um, to make sure that your levels aren't going too high, to make sure that it's still within the female range. Some women find that it helps with libido, but obviously sex drive is so multifactorial. So things like your, your physical health, your mental health, how your relationship is going, if it's sore down below. So coming back to the, the vaginal symptoms we mentioned earlier, there's so many factors involved in sex drive. Testosterone is just one part of it. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a magic cure, but it can help some women. There's another one. There's another one that I haven't got with me today, but it's called Tostran. It's a pump that you put on on alternate days. That's also something that the NHS sometimes prescribes. So that brings me to the end of the talk. I hope you found that useful. Of course, I've got lots here that you can come and have a look at uh, and some samples. But of course, any questions are more than happy to, to take.